To leave your nine to five and become a full-time freelance writer is obviously gonna require you to take a risk and believe in yourself, but I also am a big believer in taking calculated risks and knowing all of the facts before you make a decision. Not making decisions based on emotion or what somebody is telling you. Let's say entrepreneurial cliches take the leap and the net will appear. You really need to understand what you're getting into. And you probably stumbled upon this video because you're wondering whether or not you can actually make this whole freelance copywriting thing work there you can go from a nine to five to replacing your income as someone who's self-employed or maybe you're like me where you're actually unemployed and you want to start this new venture and you just don't know what to expect so i want to break down for you the actual facts the full story what type of income you can expect to make a little bit about how i pulled it off despite having no experience and transitioning from a sales career long story short yes it is possible to make a full-time income as a freelance writer it is possible to exceed six figures i'm someone who has done that however your income will highly depend on a few different factors and that's what i want to explain in this video today i'm christine from paidcopywriter.com i'm a full-time copywriter that mentors other freelancers and how to start their business how to get clients specifically how to manage clients clients and all things for it's writing tips. So if you're interested in that content, you're definitely going to want to subscribe to this channel and you're going to want to visit paidcopywriter.com and check out the free resources that I offer. I do have a free guide for getting on LinkedIn and learning how to market yourself as a writer on that platform and get those high paying clients. Grab that free guide. I guarantee you it's going to help you figure out this whole freelance copywriting thing much quicker. Here are the most common questions that most freelancers are going to be asking before they take the leap into this world of self-employment. Is copywriting hard to get into? Do I need experience? Experience? Can anyone be a copywriter? How do I actually get that experience? Are freelance copywriters in demand? Uh, is AI taking over? Should I even bother? Is this too saturated? What skills do I need to become a copywriter? And most importantly, what can I realistically earn as a freelance copywriter? Something I always do is tell you my story of how I got started. I was unemployed when I became a full-time freelance copywriter. I had quit a career in sales that I had been climbing the ladder on for years. I was making $90,000 just in base salary when I quit. For me to have left the lucrative job that I had and something that I had been building skills in for years was a really big deal for me. I was absolutely terrified, but I really followed my heart and God's guidance that there was something else out there for me, but I needed to get clear, take a step back and actually start listening to myself instead of being so stressed out all of the time climbing this career ladder. I basically took a self-enforced sabbatical from my sales career where I was basically living off of unemployment for a few months, which is something I had never done. And this was prior to 2020 when everyone was living off unemployment at some point. When 2020 came, I was already freelancing and never had to go on unemployment. My business was completely fine throughout that time. This was pre-pandemic. I was just living on unemployment for a few months and trying to figure out what my next move was going to be. I was doing so much deep diving into myself. I was doing so many personality tests. I went to see a career counselor and I knew really that I always wanted to be a writer, but I genuinely didn't understand how I would make it work from a financial standpoint. I was supporting myself. Luckily, I had gotten out of my student loan debt, but I definitely had bills to pay and couldn't take like a fun career or a part-time job or anything that didn't make sense numbers wise. And if you're watching this, you're probably one of those people too who can't really afford to just dilly-dally and like do an internship. It's really hard to start at the bottom of the totem pole when you've worked your way up in a career. If that's you, just understand that I know what that's like because when I did decide to take the lead, as a freelance copywriter, I knew I was starting from the bottom and that all the work I had done in my previous career was kind of starting over from scratch. I was going to be a complete beginner, a newbie, an inexperienced person again, which a lot of people can't really handle the discomfort when they've been in a certain career field for that long. Now, I'm going to share with you on the screen this thumbnail right here, and it's basically from a webinar that I watched from AWAI. I have never taken any of their paid courses, but they were definitely a resource that I looked at heavily when I was deciding whether or not this freelance copywriting thing could work for me. I had no one to turn to. I mean, no one I know was doing this. My mom was really supportive of me pursuing my writing, but she assumed that I would go into journalism. And as a lot of us know, journalism is pretty much dead. That's not really like the most viable career path at this point. And if it is, it looks a lot different than what it used to look like, the traditional paths to journalism. It's just so much has changed in that industry. But I went on this webinar of AWAI to 
learn about what freelance copywriting was and I found this little thumbnail. I screenshotted it. I was watching it on my phone and what I'm showing you right here is the actual screenshot that I took. It's been saved on my computer for all of these years because when I saw the financial aspect of it broken down, it seemed doable. It was like a path was laid out for me and I said, okay, if I can see visually what making an income doing this looks like, then it's possible for me as long as I take the right steps. And luckily all salespeople are very accustomed to having a goal placed for you at the beginning of the month and then breaking that goal down into incremental steps that you take to get to the goal. So for example, if I had a quota that was $3,000, I would have to make a certain amount of cold calls, progress a certain amount of deals within the pipeline. At least I had that prior training and job experience to know that if I set a goal, there was just a certain amount of steps that I would be able to take in order to get to that goal. And that's exactly the mindset I took when I created my course, 30 Days to Paid. I actually show freelancers how to set an income goal and work backwards and cold pitch until you get clients that are paying you that much to write for them. Again, it's about calculated risks and not just winging this whole thing. Now, full disclosure, this AWAI screenshot shows you how to make $100,000 per year. And I did not make that my first year of freelancing. I actually made $50,000 around that mark, which was basically half of my last income. Even though I had taken such a steep cut, I understood that that was probably necessary when you're starting a career field from the bottom, that obviously you're going to have a bit of a pay cut. And that's the biggest misconception and what I don't understand about a lot of people I see online now who come out the gate asking when they're going to make six figures as a freelance copywriter. What other career field would you expect to start the job with no experience and expect to make six figures off the bat? That's something you have to progress to and you have to hone your skills and you have to become someone who's worth making a hundred thousand dollars per year. While I did exceed six figures, it did take years. Like I'm just being completely honest with you, but as someone who was really focused on making a good living, I will say that it was worth it for me to take that couple steps back in my income in order to start a new career, doing something that I love doing for myself. Freelancing has really enabled me to progress in my life and become this new person who is an entrepreneur. It's actually technically a solopreneur. I'm a service-based business. I don't have a boss, I choose who I get to work with and I make my own schedule. There is a lot of hustling that comes with making six figures as a writer. It's not easy. You kind of have to put your head down and actually plow through the work. However, you do get smarter. You do get more efficient. You build stronger relationships with your clients. So eventually it does start feeling like less of an uphill battle, but you are going to have to put in the work to get there. It's probably the best time ever to become a freelancer. I think there's more demand than ever. There's more people that are embracing the gig economy. There's more people who are out there teaching how to enter the gig economy. It's just the best time to become a freelancer, especially right now as companies are laying off employees left and right, which basically means that they're more inclined to hire cheaper talent, right? They're inclined to hire someone who they're not going to have to pay their health benefits and this large six-figure salary for an employee. As a contractor, you're much more cost efficient. Throughout the pandemic, and despite all of the rockiness and uncertainty that's gone on in the world. My business really has continued to thrive throughout the pandemic, throughout the recession, throughout all of the layoffs, which tech was probably one of the hardest hit industries earliest on. And the fact that I'm a tech writer and my income has really been able to thrive despite these conditions, I feel really safe and confident that freelancing is just as stable as full-time employment if you understand how to do it. Now, here are the factors that your income is going to depend on, right? If you're wondering like, yes, I want to do this, but how much money can I expect to make? Well, you need to get these factors right in order to ensure a full-time income of at least 50 to 60,000 to start with. Factor number one is going to be your niche, the industry or the topic that you specialize in. And instead of trying to find the highest paying niche, whether it be finance or digital marketing, it's really about finding the niche that you can dominate and become an expert in. How can you brand yourself as the expert and build your whole online presence around that expertise? Instead of looking at what are the highest paying niches and industries, you want to look at whether or not this client has the budget for writers, has the need for maybe content writers, and then judge it from there. You really want to gauge how viable a niche is. If it's super obscure and no one's doing it, that could be a key indicator that there's not much need for it. So the best way to find your niche is really to find that intersection between what you don't mind writing about and wouldn't mind doing research on and what your expertise is what do 
you know a lot about. Also, what's really helpful is making lists of companies that you would want to write for, right? Get out a spreadsheet and create a list of companies. Just do a Google search and see what topics do they write about? Can you see yourself writing for this company? That's a really great way to check viability and see, do companies like this produce blog posts? Do they produce newsletters? What type of writing do these companies do and how can I fit myself in and offer my service around that? The second income factor is gonna be your web presence and how professionally you can present yourself online. Do you have a website with a purchase domain, meaning it says your name or your company name.com versus .wix, .weebly, something like that. I know this is a big debate in the freelancing world. Some people say you don't need to have a website, don't waste your time. But the reason people are saying that is because websites often become a procrastination device for writers. They will obsess over the name or their URL. They'll obsess over perfecting it and trying to get it to where it needs to be versus actually just creating good enough work and then starting the cold pitch process. If you know that you're a person who tends to procrastinate and fall into perfectionism, don't bother creating a website. Maybe right now you just need to put up a landing page, but in general, you have to position yourself as a business and as a service provider versus just a writer. So yes, having a single landing page might get you started, but eventually you're going to want to invest in your domain and have your presence live somewhere on the internet hosted and you want to own it. Just know that your website doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to look great. I had never built a website and I didn't know anything about web hosting before I got started as a freelance copywriter. But what I did was I just Googled a bunch of articles. I set a deadline for myself. I wound up on the phone with Bluehost customer service for hours trying to understand how to point my domain and do all this stuff that I had never heard of. You have to have confidence that if you've never done it before, there is a resource out there. People dumber than you have figured it out. So please have confidence in yourself that even if you're not tech savvy, anyone can create a website these days. Now, the other part of your online presence will be your portfolio and your social profiles. You're going to want a writer's portfolio. I have a whole video about how to create a portfolio that I'll link down to below. It's okay if you don't have prior writing experience, you can still create a portfolio with the steps that I recommend. And you're definitely going to want to have some social profile set up because I recommend that you do your pitching via social media versus email. Email is always something great to throw in there, but email is really time consuming and I think it works well for certain niches. But for the most part, you can find who you're looking for and send them a DM directly on social media without having to track down their email address, which which will save you a ton of time. It's also a more personable way to reach out because they can see your photo, whereas email is a wall of text. So yes, I have cold emailed, but it has not been my dominant strategy. So find out where your ideal clients hang out, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. However, I will say I recommend LinkedIn for just about everyone because you're most likely going to find the higher paying clients on that site. And I have a ton of videos explaining why that is. So I'll link to some of them below. You can find out all the wonderful things about LinkedIn. Now, now, income factor number three is your ability to get clients. And this is probably where freelancers struggle the most. And I think part of that reason, other than not knowing how to do the pitching and not feeling comfortable or confident enough to do the pitching, I think the real problem lies in the traditional advice that is out there about how to become a freelance writer. I'm going to link down to another video below where I talk about why traditional freelance writing advice keeps most people stuck, how it kept me stuck, and why I probably was in a totally different career field for so long because I never understood how to actually get into writing, all that good stuff. The traditional advice is really to like learn writing and take courses and set yourself up and then create valuable content. And, and there are all these strategies of what I call passive ways to get clients. You have this, it's this mentality of like build it and they will come. And the approach that I advise and the exact approach that I use to build my freelance business from scratch, despite having no experience is not build it and they will come. It is get out there immediately and start pitching clients and start messaging people and telling them what you can do for them and see where it goes. Because even if you crash and burn, you will be so far ahead. You will learn what you're doing wrong. You will learn how to change your approach. You will make so much more progress than people who are sitting there still perfecting their website, registering for another online course about how to be a copywriter. Yes, of course, we need to know the fundamentals of copywriting. And I think my benefit was understanding marketing and sales principles and understanding how I could parlay that into writing, which I already knew how to write. I was an English major and I had taken fiction writing courses, so I had never done anything related to copywriting. However, the ability to write was there. And for most people, the ability to write is there. I don't think you would be on this video if your ability to write wasn't there. So don't get super in your head about whether or not you're a good
good enough writer because you will find out really quickly that the way we write as content writers and copywriters is different from many other forms of writing and that the experience is really going to come through experience with the client and them giving you feedback. I think that's why I made leaps and bounds as a copywriter and content writer despite having no experience is because I skipped all of the courses. I just put myself out there. I got someone to give me a chance and then yes, unfortunately, my work got corrected and torn apart and it's something I still struggle with today is receiving feedback. For me personally, it's one of the hardest parts of the job is dealing with feedback and not letting it impact my self-esteem and my sense of self and all that stuff. But that's a whole other story for me and my therapist. <laughs> but you have to understand that getting freelance clients is exactly what you need to be focused on once you get your online presence set up. Don't worry about it being perfect. Pick a strategy for how you are going to get clients. My recommendation is to start with cold pitching. You can skip Upwork. You can skip Fiverr. I have so many videos for free on this channel that will show you how to cold pitch. Whether you want to do that on Instagram, email, or my recommendation, which is LinkedIn, regardless, you can find out how to pitch and get in touch with your ideal clients and, and put yourself out there. Throw your hat in the ring, as they say. I provide templates for you to use, not to copy, but to make your own. And I show you exactly within those templates how to personalize your outreach to your ideal client so that you get a response. Check out the freelance template playbook where you can download 35 plus different freelance templates that give you every scenario. It's like, how do I reach out to a client? What do I say to the client when they reach out? What do I say when they negotiate my prices? These are all things that freelance writers really freak out about and struggle with. And I want to help you feel more secure. So definitely check out the freelance template playbook. It's going to be linked below. Now, income factor number four is your ability to communicate with clients. This is so key and kind of like the most underrated, overlooked aspect of what really distinguishes people who are writing for pennies and the people who are actually earning six figures as freelance copywriters and get repeat work. You have to get out of your comfort zone, unfortunately, and talk to clients face to face on a Zoom call. Now, people might disagree with me. People might get up in arms about this advice, but I will die on that hill of telling you that if you meet face to face with your client, you're more likely to get paid more and you're more likely to get repeat business because you are building trust in a relationship. And you can look this up. It's a fact. We generally build trust with faces, even in advertising. When ads have people and faces, we are more likely to click. We're human. We connect with other people via eye contact and faces. Hopefully you are able to get on a Zoom call and that you've done that before. But if you haven't, I recommend that you try, that you offer to get on a call with the client. It really sets you apart from a lot of writers who are trying to do business via email. Now, there's a certain way that you want to propose getting on a call. You don't want to do it too quickly because your prospective client might not even have confirmed that they need a writer. And all of a sudden you're saying, can we get on a call? Don't do that. But if they're really giving you a chance and they're asking you questions about your pricing, I would offer to get on a call. This is something I teach in my online course about like when to get on a call, how to structure the call, how to be confident on a call, even though it's super nerve wracking. But I'm telling you what I love about this strategy is that a mediocre writer can really get their foot in the door and get big opportunities because they're building a relationship. It doesn't just come down to your talent and your portfolio. It comes down to how you communicate with that client and how you service them and what you provide them and how well you listen to them. That's what sets us apart from the robots. That's what's going to set you aside from the AI that could be taking over this industry. No one can get on a call and actually listen to the client and try to implement what they want the way you can if you actually put the time aside and get on calls with them and be personable and build a connection. If you're like me, you're introverted and these calls can be absolutely exhausting and so nerve wracking. I totally get that. But if you can push yourself out of your comfort zone and get on those few initial calls, you will be dumbfounded on the opportunities that will open up for you. You'll also be shocked at how easy it becomes and how you do tend to calm down and it becomes like riding a bicycle. It becomes a habit. You don't have to freak out and get nervous before the calls. It will fade. It will diminish. It's a skill just like anything else that you can hone. Now, I want to address one final concern that I get asked a lot, which is, is copywriting too saturated? Am I going to be able to actually break into this? I want you to understand something. I can list off stats that tell you that copywriting actually isn't saturated. I mean, if you just look at it statistically, there's more businesses and more need for copywriters than there are copywriters to fill those needs. However, I want you to understand that so much of freelance copywriting and being a self-employed service-based business comes down to your mindset and what you choose to believe about the industry and what you choose to believe about yourself. What I mean by that is that if you think that copywriting is oversaturated and you're constantly looking at other writers and you're constantly looking at how crowded and how many other people 
people are doing exactly what you want to do, you will get in your head and then your behavior will follow. You will give up. You will get discouraged. You will throw up your hands and say, what's the point? I'll never get there. So if you can have tunnel vision and focus on your end goal and what you want to do and improving little by little every day and not giving up, you will break into this industry and you don't have to worry about whether it's saturated or not. And I fall victim to this too because I use LinkedIn so heavily in my business and I can't help but see these braggadocious posts and all these writers who seem like they have so much going on and this and that. It just gives me a sense of imposter syndrome, which is why I created a whole video about things to look out for on LinkedIn and how to not get bogged down by all the competition and like fake news and all the crap on there. I think mindset is just so important. Copywriting is not saturated if you choose to never give up. If this is the path that you're choosing, who is going to tell you to not pursue it or that it can't be done? Yes, you might have limitations that are holding you back from success, but you will overcome them. You will learn what they are and you will fix it. And as long as you are consistent and you keep pursuing this road, no matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not give up, you can break into this world. Finding a specialty is going to put you light years ahead and make saturation not an issue. But you also have to understand that the freelance world has so many opportunities. There are freelance writers who are giving up every day. There are freelance writers who are quitting, going back to a full-time job, who drop a client. There are new companies being born every day. So you have to understand that this is such a vast world of opportunity where people go wrong is thinking that this is some get rich quick scheme. Whereas really it's the same as any other profession. You have to pay your dues, put in the time, sometimes work for a little less money. In my first year of copywriting full-time freelance, I made about $50,000. So I took a 50% pay cut in order to do this. But for me, it was so worth it to not have a boss to report to and to be calling my own shots and to feel like I was really in control of my schedule, my workload, who I wanted to speak to. So despite all the messiness and difficulties that come with freelancing, it was so worth it for me. And I'm so glad I stuck with it because it only took me, I'm going to say two and a half, three years to make it to the six figure mark. And to be honest with you, whether or not I make six figures doing this, it's actually not important to me personally. Of course, I have financial goals and I am trying, I am striving toward them, but I know that how I feel on a day-to-day basis about the work I do and who I'm working with is so much more important. And if I actually focus on that, I'll eventually reach the income goal. I have to really love what I'm doing and feel happy and satisfied and fulfilled. So for me, the pay cut is worth it. For me, the challenge is worth it. So I hope that really can soothe your fears about like whether or not it's too complicated or or whether it's too saturated because that concern is most likely your way of trying to talk yourself out of doing this and saying like, why should I even bother? I'm nothing special. All these voices in our head that are saying, don't take the leap. Don't try something new. It's safe over here in your nine to five job. Why are you going to rock the boat? So these are all of like really common concerns that freelancers have, especially the freelancers that enroll in my online course and I'm helping them build their presence and start cold pitching. And they're like, well, I feel such imposter syndrome. Who am I to say that I'm an expert in this industry? Just know that if you're feeling that way, you are not alone. And it always helps me to remind myself that nobody knows what the F they're doing in life. We are all just winging it and doing the best we can. So if you are interested in the content writing, copywriting profession, you want to be a freelancer, you want to work for yourself and not have a boss, a commute and all the bullshit office politics, I think you're going to like this video right here that I'll link to where I explain to you a breakdown of what I actually do in my freelance business, what type of writing I love to do, what type of writing I don't like to do, and how I actually make my money as a freelance writer. And once you see that, I think all of this will feel a lot more tangible and doable for you. I hope that helps. See ya.